Welcome to this uh, webinar, this USME Center's webinar on the uh, Chinese wine market. My name is Alessio Petino. I'm the uh, business advisor of the USME Center. And uh, today I'll be your moderate, the moderator of this event. Um, uh, so this event uh, is going to be uh, divided into three main parts. Uh, first, there will be a small introduction about our project or partners. Then I'll provide um, a short uh, introduction to a report that we have recently released on the Chinese bond market. Um, in the second part, we're going to have three presentations uh, from three very renowned uh, professionals in the wine industry in China. They will share uh, a little bit, they will introduce a little bit their experience, some of the tips. And then after that, we are going to have a half an hour, um, around half an hour discussion Q&A, uh, where we will be taking questions from the audience. Um, so if you have any questions, please uh, write them in the Q&A section and we will address them uh, at the at the end uh, in the last session. Uh, so before starting, I would like to make a short introduction about our project. The USME Center is funded by the European Commission uh, since 2010, so already 14 years. Um, our mission is to support European small and medium-sized enterprises, as well as Chamber of Commerce, business uh, support organizations. Um, we support them in, in getting to know China, in giving information about how to enter the Chinese market, what to be um, how to be prepared uh, to this, uh, to enter the Chinese market. And um, um, yes, we are implemented by a consortium of uh, chambers of partners, which you can see on the bottom. And among these, the China Italy Chamber of Commerce, who is organizing, who is supporting this event today, and also the report that I'm going to introduce is the, um, is the coordinator of this consortium. Um, how we support companies as SMEs is mainly uh, through five services. I would like to say that everything we do, all services we do are completely free of charge. You're not, you're never going to pay a single cent. Um, we have a self diagnosis tool, uh, basically the sort of quits uh, that you can take uh, on our website. We have a knowledge center. We have, we publish guidelines, market access uh, report, like the one we are uh, going to introduce today. We have an advice center, a sort of help desk that you can use to ask um, any questions you have, including technical questions about uh, labels, uh, technical standards, and uh, but also other general questions. Um, completely free, we have experts at your disposal to answer this. We have training sessions and we have an advocacy uh, platform. So, um, yeah, I mentioned this this knowledge. Uh, this is uh, you will see later uh, in the presentation. This this report on wine, but we also have others on on horizontal issues like the GACC cipher registration, health food, food additives, but also other um, issues such as uh, how to draft sales contract if you are negotiating with Chinese importer. What kind of clauses you should include? What you should uh, pay attention to? So this is uh, pretty much it. Um, before uh, starting, I would like to give the floor to the to Miss Federica Vigiani, who is the manager of the uh, Beijing office of the China Italy Chamber of Commerce, who uh, again has been very uh, active and, and uh, helpful in supporting this activity today and the report. Thank you, Alessio. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy just to say a very few quick words on our chamber and also the support that we provide to Italian companies based here in China and also those that are interested in the market. Uh, we are very, we're very happy as um, as partners and leading partner of the consortium to, to be part also of all these activities that are sector based. Of course, uh, the China Italy Chamber of Commerce is uh, the only business association that represents Italian companies here on the market. Uh, we're recognized by both ministry in Italy and in China, and we have uh, over 30 years of history here in China. Our offices are uh, comprehensive of all the territories uh, in the main areas. So uh, Beijing, Shanghai, Suzhou, and so on and so forth. We have eight offices in the key areas. Uh, of course, the food and beverage and wine in particular is one of the main areas uh, of expertise uh, of our companies uh, here on the market. 
uh, Italy is definitely on the forefront for what concerns the, the wine sector. And uh, so I'm very happy today to have these uh, three experts from our companies that will be sharing their insights and expertise to, uh, to the audience. Uh, as a Chamber of Commerce, allow me also to mention that we have a food and beverage working group that is therefore dedicated uh, to the industry and includes all companies working in the food and beverage and Oreca sector, such as manufacturers, importers, and companies, also Italian restaurants in China. Um, to companies here in China, we also provide uh, support, expertise, sharing, uh, and uh, information. Just like the, the one event uh, we are happy to organize today with the USMI Center. So with this said, uh, I wish you all um, a very fruitful, uh, a very fruitful webinar today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Federica. So if you are an Italian company, wine producer, uh, professional, or if you are based in China, uh, you are very welcome to get in touch with the Italian Chamber. Uh, they have a great team of uh, people who are uh, ready to support you uh, very closely. So now we move into the first part of this webinar. Um, I'm going to have a very short introduction about the report um, that we have uh, that we published two months ago in November. So this report, you can find the QR code here to access it on our website. It's completely free. Again, you just uh, you you may need to register on our website first in order before you are allowed to 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 access the download link. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, after that, um, you will you will be able to download it. So. This report um, is, uh, there are four main sections. The first one focuses a little bit on the Chinese wine market, um, covering issues such as the consumption, uh, consumption uh, who are the consumers, but also domestic production. Uh, of course, the most important probably section is the import situation, uh, but also then the distribution and retail channels and also what's uh, a little bit uh, the outlook of, of the market in the future. Second section focuses more on the regulatory side, on the technical aspects, um, particularly this uh, cipher, JCC cipher registration, but also food safety standards, what are the content of labels uh, that you have to put on wine. And we also have, um, I think it's a very interesting section on, on uh, cases of um, imported wine rejected by the Chinese customs. It gives you an idea of from, from which countries, for which reasons these were rejected. And um, uh, we also have another section, which is a more kind of um, summary of what uh, the challenges and recommendations are. It focuses on different aspects, um, including one uh, um, on the on geographical indications, which is, is a very important topic um, recently for Europe and China, and also one on funding, and there will be a specific slide on this. Um, and then we have case studies. We have done interviews with uh, with three uh, industry professionals, which uh, we are very happy to host, uh, to have uh, today on board. They will, they will share their uh, insights later. Uh, but of course, in the report, you can find full interviews, uh, very detailed uh, interviews. So, um, Today, I'm just going to give a very uh, short, brief overview of, uh, of the content of some of the content of the report. Again, it's it's a very uh, detailed and comprehensive report, so it's just going to be a glimpse into um, into this report is to show you what you uh, can expect to find in this report. So um, overall, the Chinese wine market has been uh, the consumption of wine in China has been decreasing. And this started actually uh, well before the pandemic, uh, I think at least um, since 2017, consumption has been uh, decreasing quite um, steadily, I would say. Uh, however, this doesn't mean that wine is becoming less important. Uh, on the contrary, we see that despite decreased consumption, the culture of wine, the knowledge of wine, the awareness of, of wine, um, and all the cultural, um, let's say, um, aspects uh, uh, so, uh, around wine are, are have been actually uh, growing. So it, uh, China still remains a very important, uh, it's absolutely a very important market for European wine producers. Um, among all the varieties, uh, red, still red wine is, uh, looks, uh, we will see also later in the import section, but this still red wine is the most important variety. In terms of market drivers, what is driving the market, um, um, Wine overall is, is recognized as a healthier uh, alcoholic beverage compared to others. There is also a lot of uh, investment from local companies also, and also foreign companies actually in local um, wine production, which actually contributes to more knowledge uh, to, 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 to grow in the culture of wine in China. 
Uh, of course, it also maybe leads to more competition, but if, uh, if it also uh, has positive impact on, on the awareness of wine. Um, uh, wine is also slowly emerging for, for ordinary consumption, so not just for, uh, you know, when you have big dinners, uh, just to show off basically, but also for more, um, for people to, to enjoy it, uh, maybe even alone or with a few people. Um, there is also growing interest in, in learning about wine, in learning different wine regions, different varieties, so tasting and learning activities. And last, I would say that uh, we all read from the news that the consumption in China has not uh, recovered uh, after the pandemic. This is uh, very, very, very true. I mean, this is a fact. Uh, consumption and is 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 very low. Um, but this doesn't mean the Chinese are not uh, spending. They are spending less, uh, but they are spending more carefully. So, so they they maybe they make more research uh, on what they are about to purchase, and um, they make more informed choices. And um, uh, I, I would like to end this slide by saying that China is not a homogeneous market. It's not a single market. In fact, it's it's a it's a market of markets. Um, there are different markets, different operators, uh, different actors, different channels in each regions. So you should um, focus initially on one or you know or, or on a specific region, and then only after that maybe try to expand to others. Um, in terms of consumers, uh, of course, these are very general points, but there are different personas. Let's say we have a sophisticated consumers who are somewhat frequent drinkers. They um, they are more in search of experience. Uh, they uh, have more knowledge about wine grape varieties, about wine regions, and and maybe they search for new 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 experiences like organic or or other. Um, other um, experiences. You have an affluent consumers who is pretty much, uh, like, let's say, a high income individual who is mostly concerned about the brand. Uh, he wants to show that he that this person drinks uh, very very expensive uh, wine. And um, this, I would say, is uh, uh, then then we have mainstream consumers, which are uh, you know the the main. Uh, the main, the bulk of, of the consumers. Uh, these are irregular to somewhat frequent drinkers, but they are more maybe oriented. Uh, they have more price awareness, so um, so they the pricing is is a more important factor for this target group compared to the previous two. Um, they are also very open, susceptible to to marketing campaigns, promotional campaigns, especially during e-commerce festival and so on. You also have businesses. Business is a channel. Uh, there are many uh, Chinese companies, for instance, for their annual uh, meetings, uh, they they buy a lot of wine to to drink, of course, for the for the um, for the Niao Kui, but also to to give it as a present to their to their um, employees. Um, and this is more, let's say, um, price is a very important factor here as well. And uh, and then there is also a gifting channel. It used to be pretty important uh, in the past. Now is uh, the importance is decreasing a little bit, but it's still there. So um, Chinese people like to give gifts uh, in many occasions. Um, and for this target group, I would say packaging uh, and brand. Uh, but 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 especially packaging is is a very important um, part of design of. In terms of imports, uh, this is the most important section, I would say. Uh, wine imports have been decreasing um, significantly, and this started before COVID. This is, uh, again, in line with consumption. Also, the domestic production has been decreasing. So it's not just imports are decreasing while all the rest is increasing. No, everything is decreasing. Uh, but I would like to say that this started before the pandemic. There are different reasons for that. Um, the main, uh, the most important one is that um, you know, during let's say the mid of the 2010s of the previous decades, there was this uh, rush in importing wine. This has led to a lot of stock which remained unsold. So in the previous year, so so uh, wine that was already available on the market but not sold, and this has affected the the, the amount of, of wine imported later. You can see from the from the chart here, and. Um, um, among all the different types of wine, talking about sparkling wine or bottled still wine or, or bulk wine, uh, bottled still wine is, um, and especially red, is the most important variety. You see on the second chart here, the share of uh, bottled still wine on the total um, types of um, wine imported is uh, more than 80%. So, so it's a very 
Sparkling is, has been growing a little bit, but it's still pretty, pretty uh, small. In, in, it still has a very small share. So um, in terms of the, the European Union, uh, you, Europe, of course, is very famous for, for wine, especially from a few countries, and it's widely recognized for its uh, centuries old traditions of, of winemaking. Um, but there is um, so so why so European Europe has a very important role uh, in a very important share in, in Chinese wine in the Chinese wine market. But there are many competitors. Uh, well, actually, no, no, not that many, but a few competitors which enjoy often enjoy free trade agreements with China. They don't have custom duties on wine imports, so um, the imported price will be lower, and this affects. Um, a lot of the competition. This chart here you see uh, for sparkling wine. Um, of course, the, the 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 role, the share of European of Europe in the Chinese wine market depends on the type of wine. For sparkling, is uh, a, a kind of a monopoly is ninety eight percent of share. Uh, it basically, is the totality of the sparkling wine in China uh, comes from Europe. Um, and especially we see on the second chart, uh, France, Italy, and, and Spain. Now, uh, France, Italy is a bit um, interesting situation because France leads uh, a 72% share for value of imports, but it has a 20% of share in the volume of imports, while Italy has more than half more than half of the sparkling wine bottles imported in China are Italian sparkling wine. Um, in terms of volume, but in terms of value, it's a, it's a bit uh, is is lower. So of course the price is is of course uh, in France uh, we have champagne basically, which is very very expensive. Um, for bottle red wine, the the Europe has uh, of course is is a leader, uh, but not as much as sparkling wine. You see here um, this chart, the current, uh, the market share of Europe in 2022 was 62 percent. And it, uh, what I would like to say that is that from 2020 to 2021, the market share jumped from 42 percent to 67 percent. This is mainly the result of um, custom duties uh, imposed on Australian wine, which Australia used to be a very important uh, player in the Chinese wine market. Then because of some political tensions, there were uh, some additional custom duties, duties which de facto kind of uh, closed the door to uh, Australian wine to the Chinese market. So this uh, Australian wine was kind of replaced by some European wine, but uh, not only, also also Chilean wine actually. And for bottled wine, we see that France is still the most important uh, actor, but Chile is the second one. Chile has different advantages. One of them is a free trade agreement with China, but also that um, China actually has very big wine producers. Uh, Ch Chilean wine producers are very big, so they have a lot of industrial resources. They have a lot of industrial channels to, to establish a pretty solid commercial presence in China. While maybe in other countries in Europe, uh, wineries are still very small, family managed, um, and um, maybe they lack some some of the resources to to, to establish a solid commercial press, commercial presence in the, in the country. Uh, last, um, uh, bulk wine, um, you see the situation is very different. We have two types of bulk wine here uh, in containers, more than two liters, but below 10 liters uh, on the left. And then on the right, we have uh, containers of uh, bigger than 10 liters. So in both cases, uh, the leaders are United States and, and Chile. And um, so you can actually, uh, you can go to Tmall, to Taobao and just search, uh, you know, um, big container wine. And then you will see also the brands. You will see the type of packaging they have. If it's 2.5 liters, three liters, um, you can get a lot of insights on Taobao. Um, channels, uh, there are different channels, of course. There are supermarkets, specialty stores. We see, we know like Jenny Lua, Pilgur, Main Beijing, but also Corners Deli, Ole in other cities, Guangzhou, Shanghai. Um, these are uh, focused mostly on imported food and beverage, and you will find a big selection of imported wines there. Uh, there are convenience stores, 7-Eleven, Lawson's, these have very small choice of wine, and um, uh, but it's a very also very difficult sector to enter for European wines. It's, it's very difficult to have your wine there. Food service, restaurants, international hotels, restaurants. This is, uh, I would say, one of still one of the important, most important channels for European wine. Um, it suffered a little bit during the pandemic, but uh, hopefully, um, 
he's recovering. E-commerce, but also social e-commerce. Uh, this has been the most uh, important sector growing the, the highest speed. We also have one uh, speaker today who will uh, share a little bit how, how they are leveraging these, these channels for, for selling the wine. Cross-border e-commerce um, is, is a different type of e-commerce. It's not exactly e-commerce, uh, but it is not very relevant for wine. You will see later. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, there is the gifting channel. So the three most important sectors for European wine producers, I would say, are, are, are those uh, marked in, in red here in this slide. So specialized stores, even though it's not easy to enter such uh, such stores, um, but still, um, these are important, very important channels, food service, as well as e-commerce. Um, last, uh, to end this market uh, overview, um, Many people are kind of, uh, you know, consumption, production imports are decreasing, uh, but this decreasing quantity um, doesn't necessarily indicate correspond to a decreasing quality. On the contrary, um, many experts uh, think that, uh, that the market, the Chinese market for wine is, is going through a self-adjustment uh, phase, is a natural uh, direction of the market. Um, so, so the quality, um, uh, so so uh, decreasing quantity actually might benefit, uh, might bring benefits in terms of quality. Um, also, the market is, in, is is gradually evolving from a pure import export model into a, a model where foreign wine producers and local players, be it local wine producers or local commercial operators, companies, they have stronger cooperation. There is a, maybe a joint investment to do something bigger. So rather than just selling a batch, uh, a container of wine to China. And also uh, there are new opportunities emerging like social e-commerce as we mentioned, and as we, we will see later. So again, I'm going a bit fast because time is, is short and, uh, and I prefer to allocate more time to questions with the speakers, but you will find all of this content in the report also in a very detailed way. Um, in terms of requirements, I would say that there are two main ways to enter the Chinese market. One is general trade, the normal way to enter the Chinese market, and the other is cross-border e-commerce. Cross-border e-commerce is mostly used for products such as cosmetics or health food. Uh, for wine, I would say this is not an important way because um, importing wine into China is actually pretty straightforward. It's, it's, not, it's not that difficult. Um, you need to do um, just a few things. The first most important one is um, before you ship your product, the wine to China, you should complete a registration on a specific portal of the Chinese custom. This is called cipher registration. You have to follow a few food safety standards, but these standards are uh, di not different from oh, uh, okay, are not different from EU standards. So you are not going to have big troubles here. Uh, you have to have a Chinese label, uh, and you have to put it on the bottle. Um, but also, again, the, the, the content of the label is pretty standardized, so you are not going to have much troubles in preparing one. Um, among these, the most important one is cipher registration, um, and it needs to we, we recommend to complete it even if you're just going to participate in a trade fair in China, you are going to ship a few bottles to, 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 you know, to, to present during the trade fair. Uh, we advise you to complete it even in that case. Um, specifically, this, this cipher registration here, there is um, the link here in the slide, you can access the platform. We also have a dedicated guideline, by the way, but wine is, is considered a low risk kind of um, category. So the registration can be done independently by the wine uh, producers. And it generally takes around, I would say, a couple of weeks to complete, to have it approved. Once you go into the system, uh, of course, if you should first create an account and then you fill some information. Sometimes it could be a bit tricky, but it's not that complicated. And then maybe I would say in about two weeks time, your application will be reviewed and approved, hopefully. So take this into account. And, and I would like to say that the registration is completely free. We are aware that there are some websites, some portals which propose you to to complete this registration. Uh, they even use the name GACC in their website name, um, but they ask for a fee like 900 euros fee. Uh, these are um, uh, these are not the official channels. So official registration is free. Then of course you can work with a consultant to help you, but that's a different story. Uh, the registration will still need to be done on this uh, Cypher single window platform, no other website. 
Um, then once you complete this registration, you should uh, you will receive a code which you have to put on the label. And I'll show you uh, maybe yeah here you see this is this is um, the label of of uh, an imported wine. Uh, you see circle in red is the code that you will receive after you complete the registration on the Cypress system. It must be there. If the code is not in the label, the the wine will be rejected by the Chinese customs. So then there are other types or the type of content in the label. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, I would say. You, you know, it's it's pretty standardized. Uh, there are health warnings, storage conditions, uh, of course, um, wine region, vintage year, alcohol content, uh, and so on. And um, pretty standard. Uh, you can actually the most common way is to affix it, um, to put a sticker on the bottle um, before uh, the product is shipped to China. You can also actually um, do it once the product arrives in China, if uh, the product arrives in a free trade zone or a bonded zone. Um, this is a bit more complicated because the Chinese importer will then need to go to the there to stick the, the, the sticker. So, so um, we, we I recommend the first uh, way. Going back to food safety standards, again, it's, I'm not going to focus on this, uh, but the report, you will see tables. We have translated all the Chinese standards into English to see, uh, you know, what, what is, uh, what, what do you have to follow in terms of, um, uh, you know, microbiological requirements, but also sugar content uh, and so on. Um, again, this is crystal clear in the, in the report. Um, so I'm not going to spend more than this on this. Because I would like to focus on two last slides. Um, so um, we have a summary. Uh, we have done three interviews with uh, with the three experts who are also here today. But we also talked to other industry professionals. Uh, we come we came up with a, with a short summary of of the main tips uh, emerged from these interviews. I would say the the first most important one uh, is that um, the Chinese market for wine is very competitive and uh, uh, we also see there are competitors from other from other countries which enjoy uh, zero tariffs so have lower prices uh, lower import prices so um in order to you know uh, compete in this very competitive market you need uh, actually to to invest a little bit uh, not only in terms of money but also in terms of time in terms of uh, long term planning you should um, you should have a, maybe a longer term vision rather than just uh, focusing on selling single batches of single containers of, of China. Uh, marketing and branding are extremely important. Um, some would say that these are even more important than the technical features of the wine. Um, and um, I would say that some uh, of the elements that can be highlighted into, into marketing and branding campaigns are you know, the diversity, complexity of, of wine, but also the linkage of the wine with the territory, the history, the family traditions. Uh, so elements which are pretty unique uh, to you compared to other countries. Um, the healthy lifestyle of wine producers, but also how consumers um, drink wine, uh, what are the health benefits for drinking wine. Um, if your wine has been recognized with some awards, uh, international awards, uh, highlight this in the promotion because these awards are often very well known in China. So, um, you know, if, if, if a Chinese consumer see this award, uh, they will say they will be pretty much impressed by it. And also if you sell to other markets, um, make sure that uh, you tell this uh, because uh, this shows that, uh, you know, your wine is appreciated uh, by in, uh, all across uh, the globe. Geographical indication, uh, we know there is a, an agreement between the EU and China on geographical indication. Wine is the most important category um, within this agreement. Uh, there are, I, I think, one fourth of the products in this agreement covered by this agreement are wine. And um, so um, this could be also used, um, even though uh, some highlight that it's a bit more complex than that. Sometimes it may even confuse Chinese consumers because they might um, not be very familiar with the concept of geographical indication. So take it carefully, but uh, certainly it's something that is very unique to Europe. And actually a few weeks ago, there was uh, this uh, legal case of uh, Italian Prosecco, <clears throat> uh, who, which, which won a, a case in China uh, against Australian Prosecco. So um, this, this shows that um, um, this, this kind of agreements could be beneficial. Um, 
Yes, uh, trade fairs um, are very useful, of course, for meeting new importers, but um, uh, you should come prepared. Uh, not all trade fairs might be relevant for you. Some have uh, different focuses. Some have more professional visitors. Some have more curious visitors who are just interested in tasting wine without purchasing or so, so uh, you should carefully select first. And by the way, we have um, a report. We are producing a report um, in these weeks about uh, how to get prepared for trade fairs. And um, and of course, you should register your trademark before you even go to China because um, um, trademark issues, uh, bad faith registration of trademarks is a very common issue in China. The last slide I would like to say, the reason why we, we decided to do this webinar today, uh, on the 18th of January, is because today is also the day um, during which uh, the European Union has launched a call um, for um, a funding call, basically uh, for, for, for doing promotional activities in third markets for agri-food products. So there is one agency of the European Commission called Research Executive Agency that every year provides funding for doing agri-food uh, agri promotional campaigns in third markets, including China, but of course also uh, other countries uh, around the world. There are different types of programs. Uh, some of them can be done by a single, uh, single entity. Some of them must be done by two or more entities from two countries, uh, European member states. Um, the, the, the most important thing is that the funding here um, doesn't go to a specific company, basically to promote the company. Funding is allocated to consortium, to uh, category, um, to, to, to consortium trade organizations to promote the concept of that wine, for instance, concept of the geographical indication or the benefit of the sustainability of uh, uh, production methods or, or, or things like that. Uh, of course, you will also be allowed to, to, to display your product in trade fairs or in a radio TV advertisements, but um, the funding, th this application should be prepared by uh, consortia or trade organizations, not by single companies. Single companies can go to their own consortia and invite them to, to, to prepare an application to this. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, again, today uh, the call was published for new proposals and the deadline is pretty short. I think it's a um, couple of months. Here is the link. I will also um, provide it uh, in the chat. Um, there are also more details on this website that you can find. So I would end uh, this presentation here um, so that we have time for discussion. There is, um, of course, if you have any questions, uh, write to us anytime. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for your attention. I will now, uh, of course, if you have any questions, we have uh, Q&A later, so write them in the chat, uh, in the Q&A section. Um, now let's move into the second part of this webinar where we uh, invite the uh, three uh, renowned industry professionals to share a little bit their experience. And then after, after uh, short introductions, uh, the three speakers, uh, we will have a panel with, with the three speakers where uh, they will address questions. So let's start with uh, Michele, Mr. Michele Tacchetti, who is the CEO of a China 2000 um, company. And Michele has many years of experience in, um, in the Chinese market. Uh, thank you, Michele. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Can you listen? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Alessio. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to the people, everybody. Uh, thanks to um, uh, Alessio and the USB uh, Center for the big job and the, for the mission you have now for making these two uh, market more close and more and more accessible for everyone. Um, yes, a few seconds. I try to keep 10, 10 minutes eh? it is the time we have to 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 we have to explain our our plan um yes i have experience in the market since uh, uh, 30 years about and uh, mainly promoting the made in italy products in, in china uh, is a kind of experience i have uh, also Received from my family, to my father starting working with China in 1980, and also my grandfather working with China since uh, before liberation in 1946, importing uh, hats, straw hats, straw braids for hats. 
So this is a long tradition and, and uh, what we can, the, I like to make some uh, points, few points to um, introduce also our, our plan. The first one is the considering for about the market. Chinese market is uh, changing in a general way, not only for wine, it's changing so fast. And uh, especially, of course, as the international market, even the, the last years for the problem of, uh, of uh, pandemic problem, and also the, in this, in the present situation for the war, there is uh, a, a, another step of changing that make uh, a different uh, or we should increase the approach of the market and should change the mentality. Um, of course, also the new social system, as other colleagues there explained better than me, the approach also changed the, the way to approach of the market. But the basic way to approach the market, in my opinion, never changed. The, to approach the Chinese market, the, the basic point to start is the culture dialogue. That is the key point to approach the market. If the first point is not based on the culture dialogue, probably it's difficult, especially for our countries, to approach the market. Wine is a, a important part of the a, a culture dialogue. Wine is the expression of the territory, of the history, of the culture, is a good uh, uh, business card of the of a country. Do the, is the, the expression of the historical, of the historical uh, tradition. That's why uh, be, before to concentrate the approach in, in the technical details, or, or, or even business approach, the first key point is the culture dialogue, to understand the culture, of the, especially for Chinese culture, to present our culture. This is the first step to approach the market in a general way, it's mainly for wine and food and beverage. The second step is, of course, to have a, a, a correct marketing approach, business approach. So that is, we can use the new strategy, the new digital marketing, but still in China, in my opinion, is still valid the uh, personal relationship, no? to create the personal relationship and uh, to create a good uh, network of relationship and knowledge and um, giving more confidence to the partner, to the consumers. So as you explained before very well, the created a good image of the brand is the key point and create the, the presence of the brand in China is also to explain the origin of the culture. The third point is the technical, of course, uh, expression to, to work with the technical expert that can explain and give more value to the what we are presented. Of course, the, should, the product should have a, a high level quality background now more than before. The market now have to uh, approach it with the correct products. No, no, we cannot more go ahead with some just uh, simple because it's made in Italy or made in Europe is uh, a way to approach the market. Now the market want to see the, the quality, the quality, more focus on quality. Maybe not the quantity, but the quality they want to see. That's this the key points for approaching the market that we can see in the general way, but mainly for wine, that is a particular products and very competitors uh, market. Uh, referring to the Italian wine, that is, uh, is more uh, focused on our, on our research, for my, especially for myself, Italian wine has uh, some uh, is suffering in the market because probably have no, uh, in the, at the beginning, not based the approach of the market on these po main points, I mean, on the culture. We approach the market, especially with the price, 
with a uh, offer, uh, looking for quantity. That's at the beginning maybe can be also a set, but not wor working in deep of the uh, evaluating and give a more image about the brand and the origin. Sometimes in the market we should say no. No, sometimes it's better don't don't go ahead in, in, instead of go ahead and uh, give a bad image of the brand of the products. That's sometimes is a, there is some uh, farms that are looking the Chinese taste more than promoting their own and uh, keep uh, stable on their own. Uh, quality and brand. So some companies changing the label, changing the, the taste, so they lose their original root, that is their main point. So in that case, French, of course, is make, uh, they open the market of wine, you know, they are more uh, present in China, mainly because they, are, they have worked in this way. More, uh, creating the the the, the right uh, the, the right bridge and connection in the cultural way, promoting their products and their roots, and never change too much their offer. If you see the wine, Chinese, French wine have always they are their their label, not white label with a castle with the tradition. They don't change their the image. They of course they try to to meet the taste and try to meet the strategies, but don't change the product. This is the key point in my opinion. That is uh, another key point of this is of course, some strategies that the Italian market have to follow and maybe try to copy in this case from other countries more developed, like uh, approach the market through groups, creating some groups, Italian farm are small size, not big size usually. So go alone is complicated. So this kind of uh, activities should be uh, developed more. So the market is changing in China, but, but uh, what we are worried is that uh, still we have to work on education about to, edu to educate the farm, to the producer how to approach the market. This is, in my opinion, is the, the weakness part of the market because competitors sometimes are more present, more aggressive, more close to the market that some Italian probably producer are not too much. So I think my time is ended. And so the, the my opinion, wine is still to be presented at some luxury product. That doesn't mean like luxury, like jewelry, but the approach should be like this, not for all everyone, not for the two people, but should be presented as a, a unique product, as a, the luxury we do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michele, and I'm sure uh, there will be questions which we can discuss in more detail uh, during the next uh, Q&A section. So now we move to the second speaker, Mr. Simone Semprini, who is a wine educator. He's based in Shanghai and uh, for, for many years already. So he has um, different, uh, very different, uh, let's say, insights in how uh, promotion works, how the Chinese perceive, react to, to the promotion of, uh, of wine. Thank you, Simone, for being with us, and, and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Alessio, to invite me here. I'm very glad and welcome, honored to be part of this uh, webinar. I'm not going to be too long and try to make in some point that for me, as you mentioned before, and also Michele mentioned, the market changing changed very fast, very drastically. And uh, the key point uh, to in order to introduce uh, the Italian wines to the market is to work in as a group. That's for me is the key point. Is the something that maybe sometimes as a small company, they are hardly doing this. It's hard for them to work in together for many reasons, of course, for business part. And uh, I feel like uh, also the Chamber of Commerce is doing a very good job in this in order to make uh, many partners together. 
Uh, I came in China in 2013, so I wouldn't say very long time ago, but it was a kind of key moment in the change of the wine business in, in Shanghai, especially, because I've always been in Shanghai. Uh, all the respect, Shanghai is not China. <laughs> you know better than me. If you've been in China, you know Shanghai is the most international city and also probably uh, the leading city for many for many ideas, for many strategy, and uh, for uh, many changes. So uh, when I came here in the beginning, it was an uh, there weren't many wine bars, many many places selling wine in a professional way, very few. And uh, the wine market in the beginning it was a little bit more approach in terms of uh, gift, as you said, that also decreased. The quality and the label that I saw here, they were most of them uh, OCM uh, or uh, label made uh, for the Chinese market, but not even known in, uh, in Italy. And that little by little decreased and uh, increased the quality, definitely increased the quality. So I can see now uh, more and more, uh, even small wineries coming in. And that it shows that the market is becoming much more mature, ready. And uh, I know it's very hard time. It's very hard time for everybody, but I can still see a bright future for this country in terms of exposure, in terms of uh, volumes, in terms of uh, possibility. Uh, so I always try to be positive. <laughs> it's the only way, especially now is... Uh, uh, the beginning of 2024, guys, I don't know about you, but it's been very slow. We are very close to the Chinese New Year, so uh, we were expecting probably more. But in terms of sales, uh, it's a little bit slow. We will see how it's going to be after Chinese New Year or maybe on the second part of the year. Um, still thinking that Italy is a very huge potential. Um, when I mentioned before also, when you see in my uh, interview, a uh, small introduction, I said uh, branding. Branding for me, it means uh, also branding as a country. Nobody branding his own product as good as France. They are very proud of this. Um, and it's easy to recognize uh, Champagne, uh, Bordeaux, Burgundy now is probably the most requested for my own client. Everybody in the Oreca asking for Burgundy and the prices skyrocket. Uh, what it used to be many appellations that not been considered, now Burgundy is getting more and more requests. So and that also making the price higher. Uh, the identity, as uh, Michele mentioned before, I feel like uh, you need to be more clear about Italian wines in the market. So that's something that uh, we need to work on. I wouldn't say it's... Uh, my part, but everybody part, doing this identity of Italian wine in a different way in terms of quality, in terms of uh, uh, knowledge, because I feel like the the knowledge of the average consumer is not so sophisticated, but it's improving. I know that many times they are looking for the brand, so they are picking up the familiar faces but they're also open to discover if on the other side you're somebody able to communicate this. So the key part is uh, knowledge in the beginning, uh, for my side, I feel like, uh, making uh, the consumer and uh, who's selling wine more aware about the potential and about the quality. The strategy is that, that is the, that is the road to follow. Very thank sure. you, Simon. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you for that and short and, and, and concise but full of insight. Um, there are there are a few questions in the Q and A box, uh, but but uh, we we will address them later. Uh, very soon. Now we move to the third uh, speaker today, who uh, Mr. Francesco D'Aprile, who is a partner of uh, P and D Consulting. Francesco has been. Um, has a very long history in the Chinese market, especially wine, but not only Chinese wine. And he's also one of the pioneers in using a digital uh, platform for for selling wine. Thank you for being with us today and please, the floor is yours. 
Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me in this um, in this event and also for the interview uh, for your uh, report. Interesting, very interesting report. I'm a um, business consultant. I work with China since 2005, uh, mostly supporting Italian companies in different industries to approach Chinese market, as well as um, Chinese, some Chinese companies in approaching European market too. Starting from 2013, I did start a project with an Italian winery who are producing organic wines. And uh, I tried to design a quite innovative approach in, in promoting and selling Italian, uh, the wine of this winery in China, even within the mainstream of the traditional way. Uh, of course, focusing to Chinese distributors, Chinese uh, Oreca channels, and so on, but uh, without waiting for uh, Chinese or uh, importer, but setting up a company in Shanghai and uh, importing directly the wine in China and then distributing the wine uh, through our network in uh, two um, distributors and selling directly to private uh, customers as well as uh, restaurants, hotels, and so on. This uh, traditional way um, um, was approached by us uh, starting from 2013 till 2019. I have to say quite good. Uh, quite successful, but not so much. And the main reason was because um, I was representing only one winery, even with uh, different labels. But um, in that time, uh, the market uh, mostly focused, uh, especially in the Eureka channel, was changing the approach because uh, hotel and restaurants were asking to the local distributors, not uh, for providing one or two winery wines or, uh, or uh, some uh, labels, but they were asking more and more for the whole wine list. So we, they were asking for some solution. And of course, I was not in the position to provide for this service because I was representing only one only one winery uh, with several labels, but only one. So we were growing a little bit, but not, not so fast. Something happened uh, at the beginning of the, of the COVID situation, just in the first months, because I did realize that what was happening in China and millions of Chinese were suffering stay at home without any possibility to move and enjoy uh, social life. And then I was thinking that this situation could affect in some way the Chinese living behaviors and the, of course the Chinese purchasing behaviors. And then I immediately decided to revolutionary my to make a revolution in my business model, moving to, from the traditional way to the online business. Choosing for online business, um, the social media, and uh, especially TikTok going, Chinese uh, TikTok, where uh, there were uh, KOLs with um, 100,000 or million of followers that could uh, talk and introduce uh, our wines, our product, our storytelling to the followers. And um, I was watching what was happening on online market uh, with uh, cross-border market, with um, traditional uh, shops on uh, internet, but um, I was never satisfied about these options because uh, um, this model was uh, asking to the Chinese client to have clear idea what to buy. And this is not the case in most of the situation in China. 
because Chinese, the awareness of Chinese customers about uh, international wines, Italian wine is not so high. So they follow, they used to follow what friends and people who they trust used to say and advise them. So social media and especially the Doin was uh, playing this kind of role because there are KOLs, there are our influencers who are, who are trusted by the followers and they are focused on some um, content where they have power and they have knowledge. So in this, for this reason, they are trustable. And then sharing their view, they can talk about you and introduce your product. So I choose this way. I open a shop using my Chinese company, Shanghai. I open a shop on Dohin on the beginning, the earliest month of uh, 2020. In two months, three months, I opened the shop. And then I upload all our wines already registered and already regularly imported in China. And then I, I find, I was very lucky to find one very powerful KOL. At that time, he was uh, with one million, more or less one million followers um, that I preliminarily know in the past. And he, he's, the name is a PJ. And uh, he was married to an Italian lady and uh, was uh, fascinated by the lifestyle of the, the, um, the family of his wife. They are living in the north of Italy, up to the mountains nearby, nearby <clears throat> Cortina da Brez. Uh, so, sharing uh, uh, the lifestyle of the family of his wife he was uh, being perceived as inter interesting from his followers. And then he started to promote uh, the lifestyle of Italy together with some product. And we started in this way. And then uh, my, my, the business was booming immediately. Because uh, while the business in the Eureka channel during the COVID decreased a lot, the purchasing for Chinese customer uh, linked with the home consumption was growing up very, very fast. And we were in the best position to, to follow this trend. Why? Because uh, selling online asks to the supplier different business model comparing the traditional one. While in the traditional one, it was helpful to have uh, several brands, several countries, several labels for each brand. No, then you have a few bottle quantity of bottles for each label. On the opposite way, selling online, you can sell two, three thousand bottles a day. This means that you ask for a huge stock of each label. And this was the case of our uh, strategy and business model. And we were ready at that time to cover this need with huge stock of each level. And then we grow up in this way. The main challenge at the end of this introduction, I can say it was uh, to provide uh, the interesting storytelling for this QL. Because these KOL are people who guarantee for you. They, are, they have two needs, money and trust. So they need to provide trustable content to their followers. And then it is up to us to design this content and share with them. Just an example, in uh, the, during uh, the COVID situation, uh, in, in benefit uh, from one period where in Italy it was in Europe it was easy to travel, we did organize the first live stream from the European winery from Puglia. And then after a few months, we hosted seven, eight Chinese KOL based in Europe to come and visit us in the winery in the same days during the harvest time and then live stream from our wine sharing the real life, sharing the real content of what we do, who we are, 
and how we work. And it was uh, the, the powerful uh, value of our proposal. And then starting from that stage, we grow up, grow up, grow up. Um, and now the next challenge is to increase in terms of number of KOLs. Of course, now we don't have only one. We have several one, but having a huge number of KOLs, of reasonable number of KOLs, make your business much more, much more strong and solid in approaching this market. Thanks God, in the beginning of this year, uh, I'm not suffering any problem, but we are growing up following the, our expe expectation thanks to new uh, events that we have organized. Yesterday I've been in Rome for a live stream with a, a QL based in Rome. Last week we hosted other QLs coming in the winery having two days live stream. And uh, it has been very challenging, but uh, interesting and successful. Sorry for being a little bit late. No, you are not. Uh, you are right on time, Francesco. Thank you very much. And actually, uh, to all, all the participants, if you are interested in in knowing more about you know this KOL, how do they charge, or maybe some tips in working with them, um, uh, there are more details in the in the case study in the report. So also for what the previous speaker said, everything is is more uh, detailed. Um, explain is explained more detail in the report. I would also like to say that Francesco now has uh, hundreds of thousands of sales uh, on their uh, official store on uh, Douyin and uh, WeChat. So five stars ratings for logistics. I mean, he's a superstar in, the, in this field. So, so he's a valuable person to learn from. So now I will move into, uh, we have different questions already. Um, I will move into a Q&A, interactive Q&A uh, with all the speakers. Uh, there are a few questions in the Q&A chat. Uh, but of course, if there are other questions, this is the uh, your chance to ask them. I would start with one of the questions um, that we have received, which I think um, is very. Uh, some of you mentioned it. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I will ask uh, all the two speakers to give your um, insights. So um, there is one one person who asked that um, you know. He when when speaking to wine professionals in China, uh, this person often hears that there are two price ranges. One is a high price of wine, and one is low price of wine. And the high price generally corresponds to French wine, while the low price generally corresponds to Chilean wine. Um, so this person is asking, what about the mid range? Is there, you know, kind of medium price range, or is it something that is just either high or low without the medium? What is your, um, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, maybe we start. Uh, yeah, who wants to take this? Just, just go ahead. Simone, I saw you are. Okay. Uh, mid range uh, uh, average from uh, my customer feedback is between uh, 100 to 200 to 200 RMB average all say price because a basic uh, when we're talking about basic is even below this is below 100 this for my feedback uh, middle uh, uh, I agree the higher standard the higher price for the uh, for the French wine and uh, Italy has the potential in the section because to reach in the the French market uh, is always more expensive, and Italy has more potential in that section for me. In terms of variety, in terms of quality, it can be precisely in that middle market. More than the lower, lower. Uh, talking about bulk wine, we're talking about uh, big quantity. Italy is supposed to be proper in the middle market. That is my point of view. Others want to add something? Uh, otherwise, we move to the to another question. Okay, I like to add. Uh, I fully agree with the Simone. Uh, in my opinion, the middle level is the more difficult, not to promote, because uh, in Italy we are very strong in middle level, but almost 
production is there. The range in the farm is from four to eight, no? And they, they, they say in euro, for, for euro to 80 euro. So the bagarre is there, no? the competition is there. How to let the consumer select this? No, Chinese market not easy to display many products and let the Chinese select one or two. So that is the key point. Low price is a natural selection. It's cheap, everybody, cheap price. High level, because it's a famous brand, everybody can, but the middle level is more difficult. That is most uh, meet a market more mature, probably. I can add a little bit uh, at that middle level, I can add also good value for money. Because uh, in the early stage, um, Chinese were approaching international wine, French wine with high price and also good quality. Nowadays, uh, it's not more polite to show luxury good for it. so many reasons that we know. But uh, for years, uh, people were um, familiar for testing even expensive wine, but good value, good quality wines. And then now they are changing a little bit, moving to more polite purchasing. Then they are looking for good value for money. Italy for good value for money is number one. The point is to make good reasons in introduction, our offer. Of course, the market is not ready, but I see good perspective in this direction because uh, we are quite ready to sell the quality at reasonable price. Till 200 renminbi, the quality of our wine has really super. And then uh, comparing it even with other countries. So I see 200, 250 RMB is a matching market in, in terms of a perspective that uh, is up to us, take the challenge and enter in this segment. Thank you. I have two follow up questions on this. One comes from the chat, uh, but before that, I have a personal question. Uh, Francesco, you mentioned good value for money, so they have to see the value. So my question is, what is the value? What uh, what do Chinese consumers think um, is valuable? What is the value of, of a wine? What, what, how do they perceive the, the, the value of a wine? Like they get drunk easily or it tastes as I well? Can, I, or... can share, I can share uh, the strategy that I follow. I don't use to go in technical issues when I introduce the wine. I just introduce um, basic mm -hmm. information about the wine characteristic. Then I move to the back to the storytelling. And just for an example, no, the winery that I work with, uh, they produce all organic wine, native grapes without oak, without barrick. And some wines are already internationally awarded. So organic native grapes without barrick make people curious. And then I focus on these stories, not just to make people curious and ask them to test for the first purchase. Then if they like, of course, there is uh, a process where they are familiar with buy again, buy again. In Doin, I can say, I can say that after um, about four years experience, number of uh, reorders uh, customers are about 20% in our, in our shop, in our shop. And I think it is very good, uh, very good result. Very good. Thank you, Francesco. Uh, uh, 
the, the other question uh, was more uh, related because we talked a lot of about Italian wine, but what about Spanish wine? There's a person asking about Spanish. What's the uh, you know the the, the position, the recognition uh, of Spanish wine uh, in China? Who wants to take this? I know you all focus on Italian wine, but maybe you also know. I am not an expert on Spanish wine, but uh, for what I can say in a market, uh, the perception of many Chinese for the Spanish, excluding a few top wines, uh, is on the middle low quality. Not quality, but uh, middle basic range as a perception. Eh? I'm not talking about what is the real value of the wine, because many Spanish uh, also in the Spanish market and in the Spanish Identity, I notice also here in Shanghai, increasing the, the variety and the, the labels, the winery coming from Spain. But still, uh, they suffer from a big uh, competitor like Spain, like uh, US, uh, like Chile for the price, uh, like us. Uh, France, of course, has a big market. So Spain suffer a little bit as we are doing in some way. But Maybe we have more potential than them, but it's not up to me to say this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can add, um, besides some experience I've had with some big uh, brand in uh, with Spanish, uh, I think the Spanish usually have a, a good uh, marketing uh, strategy. They are more aggressive probably than us. You can see, for example, in the olive oil, olive oil in this big distribution is Spanish. Not only because the offer they have, probably quality and price, at the moment the, the cheap price for olive oil, but they, are, they have an aggressive uh, uh, activity. Uh, but I agree with Simone, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, maybe the, the, the target, uh, the idea of the consumer is of the Spanish wine is not like, uh, of course, French or, or Italian or Chile or California. There's not uh, the, the, this kind of level. Okay, so, so another follow up question, uh, which is even more tricker, I would say. So, uh, there is uh, this person asking, what about wine from? Other smaller countries, we know in Europe there are many countries that have that have their own wine. This person is asking Cyprus, but there are also other countries. I'm thinking about Bulgaria, Slovenia, and many countries which produce wine and are actually also present in China. What do you think uh, about um, you know these these smaller countries wine? The, your perceptions. Who is brave enough to take this question? Or maybe you can just say what what they can do eventually to to promote their wines. Uh, I think. What, that, uh, the, yeah, the, sorry. Yeah. I think no, that please. country. Sorry. Thank you. Country brand uh, mm, could be less strong, but it doesn't mean that. Uh, they could not, uh, uh, comparing with uh, France or Italy, maybe, or Spain, but uh, it doesn't mean that they cannot uh, approach this market. I think the mostly is related with a kind of differentiation. There should be a clear value proposition to share. A clear, uh, you have to give good reason to Chinese customer to try and test your product. No? And this message has to be clear. No? If you don't have a strong country brand coming from Bordeaux, blah, blah, no? you have to find other ways to make Chinese curious about your product. And then, uh, why not? Yeah, well, I, I, well, I can, please. yeah, oh, sorry, Simone, please, please. No, I was just saying briefly, I, I was just comparing uh, recently one example for me, South Africa, that a few years ago, it wasn't not even on the map. Uh, and now South Africa is very, very requested, very high popularity, but they came here as a big flag altogether, as mid, middle and small producer. They 
However, South Africa has a quite a long history in wine production, for wine production, even a very good quality. Uh, but they reached China quite recently. Uh, that for me is an example. So it takes time, but uh, Cyprus, it can be an example, I don't know. Coming here in a wine fair, attending a wine fair all together and uh, flag first and all the, all the wine behind. Yeah, I, I, I confirm what I have told before. I think because the approach at the beginning should be based on culture dialogue, the expression of the country, for special country in Europe, they have tradition in wine as well, like we say Cyprus or, or Romania or other wine, like for example, Georgia, no? is a good wine in, in a, a good market in China. Uh, I think that is the, the the first step to start. So the typical production uh, of the we, they can have market if they have a good approach in the culture dialogue. Thank you, and um, so so uh, building on this, uh, I, I see some questions relate to what is the role of uh, national chambers of commerce, institutions, could they do more? I would say, of course, they could always do more. <laughs> um, but we see a lot of uh, sometimes efforts, delegations that fly to, to China to attend a trade fair uh, or, or doing spending a lot of money to, to work with a KOL for a live streaming session. And um, but maybe sometimes the results, the return is not as uh, as good, or maybe not as sustainable, not as long term as it could as it is expected. So um, I don't know if you have any comments on this, on the role of institutions, what they could do more, and maybe how they can do it better. Because we also have some participants that come from business trade organizations, from uh, so it's not just uh, companies. So if, from your perspective, if you have any advice for them. Uh, yeah, following also some, uh, there is a question I see in the chat, not direct to me, that is also referring to your yes. point about the institution. And uh, yeah, the institution has a, 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 an important role, no? an important role, because when also Simone and Francesco told about the to approach the market in a group, no, to, as a group of companies, not only one, that is not only for one uh, usually, but for all products, but one especially. So the institution, the consortium uh, have to do this one. Anyway, the, the institution can, can be the, the, the key point for organize the group to select, especially to select the quality of the company. Then there is some expert that select the quality of the products. But first, to approach the market in the one project, the institution can be you know, the top, the head of the of the of the group. That is the key point, unless they have some sometimes financial support and promotional supports so they can help. But also for make also selection sometimes because the Chinese market as a, a famous sinologist uh, uh, Maria Weber told, China is not for all, all people, all companies, not all for, only those who have a, a clear idea and approach can do, the, can do, can approach China. So for the group, uh, institution has an important position involved. I agree very much, and it's also what we try to do as part of uh, our activities at the USME Center. Uh, China is not for all. You should be very, you should be very clear about your message. But I would also add that you should have very, uh, I would say, enough resources and commitment for long-term uh, expansion in the market. So not just trying it like 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 this. So uh, I don't know if Simone or Francesco would like to add anything or we move to another question. For me, we can move to the next question on my side. Francesco, sorry. Okay, if institution, I can talk about my channel online. If um, institution can support group of Italian companies, no? 
to approach and manage KOLs, promoting not this individual brands, but the, the region, the country, some aspect of our lifestyle, producing content useful for KOLs to promote Italy, and then make and then leave to the individual company or consortium the, 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 the role to sell themselves. You know? This balance can be very helpful in, uh, in uh, the online market nowadays because producing content is not so easy for the individual companies. Thank you, Francesco. And I would like to take uh, this comment to remind you that about the funding opportunity from the European Union, which doesn't need to be applied by uh, trade organizations and consortia. But this funding goes exactly for this purpose. So it's rather than promoting a single winery or single label, it promotes aspects such as sustainability, such as traditions, such as linkage to territory, aspects like this. And um, so, um, you know, if you're interested in this, and I think you should get in touch with your consortia with, uh, with a business uh, organization and maybe try to see. There is also funding at the national level. Many countries, uh, I know some some each in Italy, but also ESEX uh, in, in Spain and other uh, uh, other countries they also have their own funding. So also get in touch uh, with them. Um, uh, we have a few minutes. Uh, I will go with a uh, couple of other questions before um, and in here there is one uh, related about trends. So this person is asking um, what is uh, uh, the impact of new trends in Europe um, uh, in, in China. So, so basically our new trends that are growing in Europe are emerging in Europe. Do they also occur in China, for instance? And this person gives the example of uh, natural wine or orange wines, which are growing. Uh, especially among young uh, consumers. Do you see the same in China? And, uh, or maybe do you see that the two countries are disconnected in terms of trends? I can start. Uh, of in, course. Shanghai is, in Shanghai, it's a big booming. About natural wine uh, is a very big booming. Uh, I request uh, even even the local producer, many producers from China, they are doing uh, now organic, or not even organic, probably natural wine. That uh, in some way for uh, a new market like China, for the young generation, that uh, they are kind of uh, always looking for something new. Because the natural wine is totally out of the, well, it's literally completely different than the standard wine as we know. Uh, and uh, I can see a lot of requests. Uh, I don't know how long it will be this wave. That's something that I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to keep uh, the, the fashion and the request, uh, because already some of my clients, they are moving back to more norm classic wine, maybe biodynamic, that is not natural, just to don't be confused. Uh, and uh, something that is a little bit more standard wine than the natural. That is my feedback. Others? I, I agree. Uh, when you approach the market, also the producer should have something different, not to others, something to make some also to... Uh, catch the interest of the consumer, of the distributor. Maybe you present the company as organic production or natural wine or other no alcohol wine, but maybe later you sell the, the regular wine. No, But the, the way to approach in the, in the communication is that you, this company, this producer has a kind of research, no? as a kind of new products, uh, you know, in China is also wine is uh, combined with healthy. Because in China, everything is healthy. No, is 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 a good approach. So that is also the key. Should be also marketing key to open the market. Maybe you sell the 
the, 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 the basic one or the other one, the, the other people selling, but uh, how to make the brand more interesting and uh, unique. This is also a marketing strategy. Very good. Yes, I can say that from our side, uh, promoting uh, during the video live stream, the label of the green uh, organic label on the back uh, label, label of the bottles is the more important um, uh, message that we give in promoting our wine. And it is the mostly well perceived from the customers. Very good. And if I may add, that's very small comments. Uh, orange wine. I remember I, I was living in, in Beijing until a little bit more than one year ago. Um, and I remember orange wine, it, it was growing a little bit. There were some bars focusing only on orange wine and selling at 350, 400 renminbi per bottle, actually. So also pretty expensive. Yes, yeah, not cheap. Not cheap. Yeah. And, uh, and there, were, there were also from countries such as Georgia, Azerbaijan, so not just, uh, of course, Italy as well. I think uh, I don't remember others, but but um, it was uh, interesting to, to to see that. And there was there were a couple of bars. Um, so now um, I would take only the last question, which is a more kind of um, to end this discussion about. Okay, so what? Um, so we have seen uh, in pores consumption uh, were uh, are decreasing a little bit, at least in terms of numbers. Um, we also know that the consumption, the economy in China is uh, a bit below expectations, let's say. Chinese consumers are more careful in how they spend their money. So um, given this, uh, against this backdrop, uh, given this context, what do you think, um, what do you think European wine producers should uh, should do? And uh, what's, uh, what could be an approach, a strategy that they can use to, you know, to, to, to uh, into this uh, during this period, and maybe what actions that can be done. There was also another question which was not answered about, um, you know, okay, how can I promote this? Uh, uh, how can I pass this message? So maybe one or two minutes each. Who wants to start? Okay. Uh, so I think uh, yes, quantity is decreasing, but not only because the problem of the uh, COVID or war or other pro or economy probably was a trend already started. Um, because the market is readjusting, market is readjusting. For some way, uh, as also Simone and uh, Francesco say. The market in some big city, the big city make the market the main market in China, no? But this probably is not the real market, no? Because the market in China is very big and the market probably should be developed in the medium and small city. That need to be educated. And we can educate it in the quality, not the quantity, in my opinion, especially for the European producer, is for that has middle, uh, small medium enterprise, should be focused on quality, quality and education. I suggest also to educate the producer, not only the market, because in my opinion, the weakness part are the producer that should be educated because the consumer, the consumer in China are ready to be educated, study, they like to travel, like Francesco say, they want to visit the farm, taste, though they are ready to study, to approach. Sometimes we don't find the same uh, willing from the producer, not interested to fly to China, educate and explain, probably because they have a, a good attitude to wait the buyer in the, especially some region like Toscana, Veneto, uh, to Emilia, with the buyer, like a tourist, no, they have a good market. So they, they are not more internationalized as should be, probably. But this is a big point. By the way, the market should be uh, approached in this way, educated, quality, for, uh, follow the expert, technical expert and marketing expert. Thank you, Michele. 
Francesco or Simone want to add uh, anything or? But uh, we did suffer uh, this year um, a decrease of, in terms of uh, consumption, mostly re related with more expensive wine. Uh, in terms of quantity, we did not suffer, uh, but the mix of purchases was moving from more high cost to cheaper one. Um, mostly in the beginning of 2023, the first five, six months. In the second part, we have seen something of different coming back to the normal uh, interest for uh, good wines and also expensive wine too. And this uh, during this Chinese New Year, we have sold a lot of top uh, range products of, of our product list. So again, uh, People need to be curious and approach your product uh, if they have good reason to do that. So following what our colleague already said, is it up to the producer to introduce in the best way our products and our companies uh, and make their purchase interesting for their experience, testing experience. Thank you, Francesco. Uh, I agree with Francesco. The, the key point is the communication, the communication of the from the producer to the market uh, and uh, find uh, the, the right target. Um, I was reading a famous book, uh, probably about the marketing uh, and uh, everything started from why. So why are you choosing my wine? Why are you choosing my product? Simon Sinek uh, is a leader on this. I mean, uh, you need to start to think in uh, why are you choosing my Sangiovese or my Barolo instead of yours? And you need to give a, a history. Uh, you need to give a, a full package. That's for me is one of the key of the communication. One of the, want to start to thinking about uh, more than how, why? And then you're building everything behind that. Thank you, Simone. And, and it, this is a very important uh, consideration. So before the how and when, and I think the why is, is even more fundamental, is, is the basic. So thanks uh, to Francesco, Simone, and Michele for your insights. Um, again, many of these uh many of these uh comments insights uh have also uh, are also included in the report uh we advise you to download the report which is free you will find also some screenshots from uh from um concrete activities in the slide that you see here there is a QR code uh, it leads to um a short survey we would really appreciate if you could take one minute of your time to 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 fill it and also maybe eventually uh, propose some topics uh, that uh, we could on which we could do other events in the future. Um, some questions, there are still some questions in the Q&A. Unfortunately, we don't have time to answer all of them, but I invite you to contact us to, to maybe, um, yes, to write to us uh, with, with these questions. We will try to provide uh, an answer to, to this question. Here you see the address. So um, uh, also a final reminder, we are going to circulate the slides of this event, uh, but also the recording of this webinar is going to be published on our website. Uh, your personal information will not be uh, published anywhere. So it's, uh, and, um, and that's it. Uh, I think uh, it was a very interesting discussion, many insights. These are our socials. Uh, you can follow uh, this account for, 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 for being up to date with our events. Uh, actually, we have more. We also have another event tomorrow on cosmetics. If if any of you is interested in cosmetics, um, but we also have other on trade fairs and and many other upcoming. So follow us, please. And um, yeah, I think uh, that's it. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you all for your participation. Thanks to the Italian Chamber for your support in this. Uh, thanks to the speakers for your insights, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>